See, take an automobile, for example, which is a simple mechanical system that you're all familiar with. Why is the motor in front? Well, you probably know the reason, because it was originally called a horseless carriage. And therefore, the motor was put where the horse was, in the front of the cart, right? But do you think that somebody who didn't know that could find out by taking the automobile apart? Well, let's see. The automobile was originally a six-passenger vehicle. Why? Why wasn't it five, four, fifteen, nine? Why was it six? Will taking it apart tell you? Of course not. How many of you have ever been to Britain, England? You know they drive on the wrong side of the road. Why? Do you think taking British cars apart is going to tell you why they drive on the left and we drive on the right? Of course not. What we began to understand is that why questions about objects called systems cannot be answered by the use of analysis. Now, answers to why questions are called explanations, and the product of explanations is understanding. And what we kept, became aware of in the 1950s where science produces no understanding, it produces knowledge. Because the product of analysis is how things work, never why they work the way they do. We needed a new way of thinking to provide explanation and therefore understanding. Explanations always lie outside the system, never inside it. Analysis takes you into the system and how it works. It provides knowledge, but not understanding. We need another way of thinking, which not surprisingly is called synthesis, that provides explanations of the behavior of a system. Synthetic thinking consists of three steps, which are exactly the opposite of analysis, each one. In the first step of analysis, you take whatever it is that you want to understand, you take it apart. The first step of synthesis is you take the thing you want to understand and say, what is this a part of? You identify a containing whole of which this is a part. So if I want to understand an automobile, I say it's a part of the transportation system first. When I understand the university, it's a part of the educational system. The corporation is a part of the economic system, and so on. In the second step of analysis, I try to identify the properties and behavior of the parts taken separately. The second step of synthesis, I try to explain the behavior of the containing whole. What's the educational system? What's the transportation system? In the third step of synthesis, I try to aggregate understanding of the parts into an understanding of the whole. In the third step of synthetic thinking, I disaggregate the understanding of the containing whole by identifying the role or function of what I'm trying to explain in that whole. A system is a whole, spelled with a W, that's defined by its function in a larger system of which it's a part. Every system is contained in a larger system, and its role or function in that system is what defines it. So if you take the automobile, coming back to that again, it's defined by the fact that it's an instrument for carrying people from one place to another on the ground under their control and in privacy. So you describe its function, what it does. You don't describe how it does it. If you want to define a computer, you don't talk about how it works, you talk about what it does, what functions it performs, data processing, calculation, and so on. All systems are parts of larger systems. Every system, then, is defined by its function in a larger system. In order to perform that function, it requires essential parts. These are parts which are necessary for the performance of the function, but not sufficient. So, for example, the motor is necessary for an automobile. It can't run without a motor. It doesn't need a windshield wiper to run. It does need a door handle, does need a cigarette lighter or rugs on the floor. But the motor, the battery, the fuel pump are all essential. Well, that means then that an essential property of a system 
is that it cannot be divided into independent parts. That its properties derive out of the interaction of its parts and not the actions of its parts taken separately. Therefore, if we apply analysis to a system, what's the first thing you do? Take it apart. But when you take it apart, what happens? It loses all of its essential properties, and so do its parts. You see, if we brought an automobile in here, it's big enough to take one, and disassembled it and kept every part in this room, we would not have an automobile. We have the parts of an automobile. A system is never the sum of its parts. It's the product of their interactions. So when I take a car apart, it's no longer an automobile. But even more critical is the fact that the motor, which is necessary to move a car, when removed from the car, can't move anything, including itself. It just sits there. You cannot think without a brain. But if a surgeon removes your brain and puts it on a table, it doesn't sit there and think. It's necessary for your thinking. You think the brain does not think. And when it's separated from the system of which it's a part, it loses its essential function as an instrument for producing thought. Now, think of the implications of that simple property of a system to start with. You go to a business school to, to learn how to manage and organize an activity, and you look at the course structure. What are the courses on? They're on the parts of a business taken separately. So you study marketing as a separate subject, production as a separate subject, finance as a separate subject, and so on. The net result is at the end of a business school, you have no understanding of what a business is and not even an understanding of the parts because you can't study the motor of an automobile independently of the way it interacts with other parts. You can't study production independently of how it interacts with marketing, finance, and personnel, and so on. But the way universities are structured, these are silos of inquiry where each one claims complete autonomy and independence of the others. And to the extent that they succeed, they emasculate the subject, take all the content out of it. 